Hello and welcome to The Lift Online. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Tanya and this is Kiara. Hi. And we just want to give you a big welcome, especially if you're new or if this is your first time tuning in. Mm -hmm. We want to know who you are, so please take a moment and fill out our digital connection card. We've made it super easy. Just scan the QR code right below me. Yeah. Um, and it's just a great way for us to connect. Yeah, you can also stay connected with us by looking at our social media on yeah. all platforms at The Lift Live. It's just a great way to see what we're doing and what's going on around yes. the church or you can download our Lyft app there's yep. actually a QR code right now on the screen that you can look at and that's a good way to see what's going on in yeah. service look at sermon notes and yeah. all that it's a great app it has some awesome features mm -hmm. and today we want to take a moment to honor our amazing yes. pastors it is pastor appreciation day and we are so thankful yes. for everything pastor Lance pastor Clay and pastor Emmanuel do for the lift yeah. the way that they love and lead the church is amazing so mm -hmm. in the chat rooms right now leave them some encouragement if they yes. have impacted your life mm -hmm. let them know um, and so yeah we're just excited about that yeah another big thing happening today is actually baptism Sunday yeah, we are super excited about that happening today and Pastor Lance likes to say it's an outward expression yeah. of an inward decision to follow Christ yes. and there are actually four baptisms happening today that yeah. we're super excited about so we're so excited to witness those being baptized today yes service is starting soon we're gonna kick it off with work Worship, and then we're baptizing yes. and then Pastor Lance is bringing the word today mm -hmm. and you can follow along with the message through our Lyft app yep. follow along with sermon notes well we're gonna jump into service we hope you enjoy come on I will bless the Lord at all times come on let's stand we're gonna sing to Jesus because he's worthy of our praise come on put them hands together here we go come on let's sing Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchased of God, born of His Spirit. Oh, I'm watching His blood. Hey! I can't stop singing oh, oh, oh. oh, this freedom's oh, oh, oh. I'm praising my Savior All day long, hey. all day Come on, I got a song and I'm singing loud The praises pouring out The praises pouring out And I will dance in your freedom now You have brought me out You have brought me out oh.
in here giving praise. He's worthy. Come on, we're going to offer up our worship and our praise to Jesus. We're going to teach you a new song this morning. It's very simple. So when you catch on, come on, sing it to the top of your lungs and let's praise Jesus. Come on. Come on, choir, help me sing this. You, Lord, you are worthy. And no one can worship you for me. For all the things you've done for me. And no one can worship you for me. Here's my worship, all of my worship. Receive my worship, all of my worship.
Jesus is in this place right now. His spirit is so sweet. God, we want more of you today. We want more of you today. We don't want the same thing you gave us last week. We want more of you. We don't want your gifts. We want you. God, I love you. Come on, if you haven't this morning, go ahead and tell Jesus you love him. Come on, speak to him. Come on, let's fill this atmosphere with praise and worship to our holy and righteous God. Come on, open up your mouth and tell him. Come on, thank him for his presence. Thank him for his goodness in your life. Thank him for his provision. Somebody needs to sing this to Jesus. Sing Jesus. Sing holy. time just say Lord you are holy holy you are holy holy thank you Jesus you are holy holy Jesus I love you Jesus I love you I believe there's someone here today that is searching for something. You're longing for something, you're hoping for something. And a lot of times we like to look for horizontal things to fill us, a person, a place, a thing, to give us that ultimate satisfaction. But here's the thing, there are no paradise locations. There's not a perfect job. There's not an ultimate satisfying experience and people will always fail you. So when we look horizontally, really, we're just left hopeless. So that's why we have to look vertically 
Because when we look vertically to Jesus, we realize that the grace of the cross, it didn't just forgive us, but it ultimately satisfies us. It gives us everything we need to a point that we need no more. So in order to find hope, we must first find Jesus. Hope has a name and his name is Jesus. There is a song, I know it well, a melody that's never failed on mountains high and valleys low. My soul rests, my confidence in you belong. You know it, let's sing. Hope has a name, his name is Jesus, my Savior's cross has set the sinner free. Hope has a name, his name is Jesus, oh Christ be praised, I have victory. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And there is a light, salvation's flame, Christ undefeated, trampled the grave. See now the cross be lifted high, the light has come, the My hope complete, yeah. now home and glory, your face shall see. My pain no more, my fear will cease. I bow my life, I fix my eyes on Christ, my King. I bow my life, I fix my eyes on Christ. My King, oh, we fix our eyes on you, Jesus. Come on, let's lift our hands and sing this in unity. No has a name, his name is Jesus, my Savior's cross. I said the sin of free hope.
placed I have victory Oh Christ be praised I have victory And I sing praises to your name Oh Lord Praises to your name Oh, Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Your name is great and greatly to be praised. Come on, let's sing we. We sing praises to your name. Praises to your name. Oh, Lord. Praises to your name. Oh, Church, I'm going to let you be seated for just a moment. Yvette, go ahead and come on in. And Hey, we're going to baptize. Yeah. yeah. This is uh, it's going to be a real special day. Yvette's family, I'm going, to go ahead, I'm going to ask you if you will, go ahead and come on up. And um, Yvette, you go ahead and sit down right there. Yes, ma'am. So... <laughs> You've messed me up. I'm just so happy to be here. Let me just tell you a few stories real quick. Okay, so Yvette, she doesn't live here. She actually lives up in New York or Long Island. Mm -hmm. And she has been part of our online church for well over two years now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was telling us her story and, and you know, when, when the pandemic hit, it was very scary for, well, for all of us, right? And so for a long time, she tried to find church, couldn't, her family couldn't really feel comfortable, but they found a church uh, by watching online, like just, and she's like, Pastor, I promise you, I can experience the Lord online. And, and you know, and it's just amazing. You should hear her story. But uh, she's coming today to be a part of our church and our family. This is your family. Look around you, This is your family right here, all right? And you know what baptism is. We say it all the time. Baptism is an outward expression of an inward decision. And Yvette has said yes to Jesus Christ. And she's coming today to say uh, just to declare that to the world. Like, this is a testimony. And it's so powerful because I'm down here as we're singing. She's down here worshiping. And I mean, I, I've got tears in my eyes just listening to you. Such a powerful story. I love baptism. So let me ask you, with your friends and family surrounded or surrounding you, I want to ask you, have you said yes to Jesus Christ? Yes. No doubt there, right? So, um, based upon your profession of faith, 
my sister. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. <laughs> Isn't that good? Isn't that good? He came all the way from New York to right here to do that right there. Y'all give her a hand. <laughs> There you go, you're good. Yeah. Okay, so that's, if that's not all, we have, we have some more. Y'all, thank you so much. Thank y'all for coming. Thank you so much. Hey, Kyle, jump on in here, buddy. Yo, everybody welcome Kyle. As he's getting in, let me, let me tell you, I, I met Kyle a couple years ago when he and some friends of his showed up here on a Sunday afternoon to do missions. I'd never seen the boy before. He comes in, he starts talking to me, he brings friends to, to pack boxes for a, a, a school drive that we were having. And since then, since then, I, I can't get rid of him. He's here every Sunday and he's become a good friend. You've become a good friend sends me text messages and encourages me. And um, he's got his family here today to support him. And not only them, but this is your family as well, my friend. Look around, now look around, I want you to see this. This is your church family. And he's coming today to say that he has said yes to Jesus Christ. I, I love Kyle because he's jumped right in. Like he's an intern, he's serving. Uh, so many things are going on here and he's a part of them. And so I just wanna say thank you for doing that, all right? Thank you so much. And your, your sitting here is a testimony to a changed life. So I wanna ask you, in front of your family and your church, have you said yes to Jesus Christ? Yes, sir. Well, based upon your profession of faith, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism raised to walk in newness of life. Congratulations, my friend. I'm proud of you. Everybody help me welcome Gabriella here. Will you do that? <laughs> Family and friends, anybody, y'all come on around. We're going to give you some time while I talk about baptism, okay? Family and friends, go ahead. We're uh, just, just gather around, like be close. All right, we're just one fam big family here. If you're new to the lift or you're watching online, you're thinking, what are they getting ready to do? This is what we call baptism. This, what you're about to see, is simply an outward expression of an inward decision. Gabriella is, uh, she's coming here before her family and her church family to declare a testimony that Jesus Christ has saved her. And I love what Gabriella is doing because here's the thing. Um, she's going to be baptized today, but do you know she's already, she, earlier this morning, she went through our volunteer and she's signing up to, uh, she's already signed up to volunteer. Like she's going to, she's already serving. She's like, isn't that amazing? Congratulations. I just got to give you a high five on that one. So um, anyway, without... Um, delay. Let me ask you, Gabriella, have you asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart and your life? Well, based upon your profession of faith, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk a new life. Congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. Y'all give it up one more time for Gabriella. Will you do that? Family, thank you so much. Y'all, thank you for being here. Isn't that awesome? Okay, so uh, we're not finished yet, though. We have another person to baptize. Come on over here, Maddie. Come on in. Come on in, Maddie. I'm not gonna let you fall. I got you. 
Okay, friends and family of Maddie, just turn around and sit right down. You come on up. Okay, you come on. Get close. My goodness. Love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, y'all come on in. You know these people? Oh, my goodness. Okay, so just look around. Look around. This is your church family right here. Okay? And uh, we're here to celebrate a changed life. I want to ask you something. Has Jesus Christ came into your life? Have you been saved by Jesus? Well, based upon your profession of faith, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk a new life. Can we celebrate? Can we celebrate? Hey, congratulations. Congratulations. I sing praises to your name. Go ahead and stand, church, and sing. Go ahead. And if you're new, I want to say welcome to the lift and please fill out a digital connection card. Scan the QR code on the screen. That's just a great way for us to connect. And will you guys help me welcome everybody that is tuning in online right now, wherever you're watching from. Welcome to the lift. We love you. We have so many things happening here that I can't wait to share about. So next Sunday, we are having another Kenya interest meeting for our summer 2023 Kenya trip. So if you missed the last one and you would like some more information, you're interested in going, you can come to that meeting. It's next Sunday, right after the 11 o'clock service in the VIP room, which is out the doors and to your right. So we would love for you to join us. And if you already have made the decision to be a part of the team, you can sign up for that trip right now scan the qr code on the screen and that's signing up saying i will go to kenya summer 2023 we're so excited for that trip and then october 30th we're having a family fest right here so bring your family there's going to be food rides it's just going to be a great time and enjoy a great evening with your family and then we also have some more exciting stuff happening in november november 13th we are having parent child dedication so if you have a little one that has not been dedicated to the lord yet now is your chance go ahead and sign up for that as soon as possible we have some next steps we want to walk you through before november 13th so go ahead and sign up well we are excited to get into today's message if you have not yet downloaded our lift app go ahead and do that right now on there you can follow along with sermon notes as pastor lance goes through his message and hey you guys it is pastors appreciation month so can we give it up for our amazing pastors here at the lift we love them they're amazing so show them your appreciation stop them out in the hallways and let's get ready for this message let's welcome pastor lance to the stage okay that's church right wardrobe change and everything, right? (laughs) 
Um, I, I, man, it's like, where do you start after that? It's such a beautiful picture of changed lives. Such a beautiful picture. Uh, Gabriella and, and, and Maddie, this service and um, last service, two amazing stories. Uh, I, I wish you'll have to go and watch. You'll have to go and watch so you can, so you can see those stories as well. Um, there's no question that, that Jesus lived a different life than most people. Right? No question about it. I think the question is, how has the way that Jesus lived affected the way that we live? Has it? Should it? Should, should the life that Jesus lived, the way that Jesus lived, should it have an effect on us? One of our, one of the reasons why we do what we do here is to see people changed by Jesus. That is the why. That's what gets us up every morning. We want to see people changed by Jesus. But the change is not just a one-time event. It's a lifetime. So it's not enough for you just to come to church today and to just believe in Jesus. I don't want you to just believe in Jesus. The Bible says that, that, that even the demons believe in Jesus. So it's not enough to just believe in Jesus. We have to allow his, his life to have an effect on, on us. And, and, and shouldn't it? Like, shouldn't the life of Jesus have an effect on us? Shouldn't it af affect our morals? Our money? Shouldn't it affect the way that we think, the way that we handle situations, the way that we treat people? Shouldn't the life of Jesus have some kind of bearing on that? Has he? For you today, has the life of Jesus impacted you in such a way that it's, it's changed those things for you? How do we allow that to happen? How do we allow Jesus to completely change us like that? The, the answer is simply this. The answer is for us to become a disciple. Are you a disciple? Are you a disciple of Jesus? Have you ever thought about that? When, when you think of a disciple, what do you think about? Does someone come to mind? Some super Christian out there? Let me, if, you, if you're taking notes, I want to bring some clarity to this and, and give you a, an understanding or a working definition for when I say a disciple, this is what I'm thinking, okay? This is what a disciple is. A disciple is fully devoted to learning from Jesus to live like Jesus. That's what a disciple is. Fully devoted. Okay, not, not halfway in, no, all in, all right? All in, fully devoted to learning from Jesus to live like Jesus. That's what we're called to do. That's why God created us. If you go all the way back to Genesis, the very first chapter in Genesis, we see a conversation that God is having with God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. They're, they're having this conversation. And in, verse, in chapter 1, verse 26, this is what we see. God says, let us make human beings in our own image. And he says, to be like us. That's God. God created you and me to be like him. And if we're going to be like him, then we have to become a disciple. That's why he sent Jesus. Jesus is the example. Jesus is the one that we follow. Everything Jesus does leads us to being like, like God. So, are you a disciple? 
It's interesting in, in life, um, we, when you think about things that we are constantly monitoring and, and constantly observing, uh, we measure, we rate, we observe so many things in life. For, for example, um, we're constantly monitoring quite possibly our weight. There's no telling how many of you in here Many times this week you would go and you would step on a scale just to see. Have you gained? Have you lost? I mean, it's, it's kind of a measuring stick. It lets you know how well you're doing. If you have one of these, okay, maybe you've walked this week like me. I, I, I've walked several times this week with Andrea and, and we're like, we're trying to get our three miles in. You know, we want to get that 10,000 steps a day. Why? Because I'm, I'm measuring, I'm, I'm monitoring my activity. We do all kinds of things. We, we, we like to, to measure, we like to monitor our, our, the distances that we travel. For some of us who are tight, we monitor the temperature in our houses, right? We, we watch the thermostat, trying to save money. Got to save that little time. We, we open up the, our, our banking app multiple times a day. Why? Because we're monitoring how well we're doing. Isn't it interesting that with all that, probably most of the time we don't monitor how we're doing spiritually? Like there's no scale that we're constantly trying to, to weigh ourselves up against to figure out, you know, am I a disciple of Jesus? Am I following him? How am I living? There's nothing that we measure ourselves by. And so how do we know? How, how do we know? How do we rate ourselves to know whether we are a disciple of Jesus? Well, I, I want to start today just to give us a little framework with a with a scale, with, with a rating system, okay? Just to see where we're at. And uh, I want you, your, your job for the next few moments is just to see, okay, where do you fall on this scale? I'll put the scale up right here. Um, the first part of the scale simply says, not a disciple. Maybe that's you. Maybe you're here today and that's where you identify. You would say, I'm not a disciple. If you're saying that a disciple is one who, who learns from Jesus how to live for Jesus, I'm not living for Jesus because I don't even believe in Jesus. I, I don't, this whole Jesus stuff, who has time for him? I'm not religious. I'm just here because somebody invited me. I get that. That's, that, that's okay. Like, you're in a good place. I, I wouldn't want you anywhere else. This is a great place to be. But is that you? You're not a disciple. Maybe you're the next one, Christian. What is a Christian? A Christian is someone who has said yes to Jesus. Someone who um, recognizes the fact that they are a sinner and they, they, need some, they need something to happen because if they don't get forgiven of their sins, then one of these days, you're going to spend eternity apart from God. That's, so, so when you recognize that, you, you repent of your sins. You turn from your sins. Well, a Christian is someone who says yes to Jesus. But how many of you know there's a difference between being a Christian and being a disciple? Maybe you're here today and all you are is just a Christian. Like you've got your fire insurance. But living for Jesus, allowing Jesus to impact your life, your decision-making, the, the, the way you live is just not a thing for you. It's not important to you. Maybe you find yourself on the scale right there. Um, it could be that you are what I call a dabbling disciple. Like you just dabble in it. You're, you're not all in Sometimes Jesus is important to you. Other times he's not. You're, you're hot sometimes. You're cold other times. You go to church some. Other times you don't. You're just not all the way in. Sometimes Jesus is a big deal to you. Other times he's not. Sometimes you serve other times, if your schedule doesn't fit or, you know, I'm just going to not show up today, you're just dabbling. 
How many of you find yourself there? Perhaps you could be, and there's, there's many of you in this room, you could be what we call a fully devoted disciple. Fully devoted. Doesn't mean that you're perfect. Doesn't mean that you never sin. But what it does mean is that you're all in. Like every day that you wake up, you wake up with purpose. And not just your purpose, but you know that you've been designed by God for his purpose. You, you wake up with a calling. You, you want to learn from Jesus so that you can live like Jesus. Every situation is affected in your life. The way you think is affected by Jesus. The way you treat people is affected by Jesus. That is a fully devoted disciple. And there are people like that. So, so where, where are you? Rate yourself. Where are you on this scale? Because see, we, we can't, we, we, we'll never fix it or we'll never move forward, take our next step until we know where we're at right now. It's important for you to know. Are you just not a disciple at all? Are you just, I'm just a Christian. But Jesus, you know, I'm good. Are you just dabbling in it? Or are you fully, fully involved, fully in as a, a developing disciple of Jesus? How do you know? How do you know if you are a disciple? Like, what is the proof of this? I want to spend the time that I have left with you looking at a disciple. Okay, looking at a guy that I think you and I can relate to. Like when you study this guy's life, he's like you and I. He, he, he messes up. He makes mistakes. But you know what? His heart's there. He's following after Jesus. The guy's name is Peter. You look at Peter, he was a disciple of Jesus. Very clearly he was a, a disciple. And there were some things about Peter that made him a disciple. And those same things about Peter that made him a disciple can kind of prove that we are a disciple as well. And so I want to talk about three things. Okay, ready? Three things. If you're taking notes, write this down. How do you know? What is proof that you are a disciple? The first one is if, if you make other disciples. If you're making other disciples, Jesus, he extended this invitation to us to be his disciples. That's what he means when you read in scripture, come follow me. When he makes that statement, he's talking about following after him. It's an invitation to be part of, of God's redemptive work in this world. It's interesting, you, you look at the work that God does, God saves people. You and I don't save people, but, but you know what we do? We have the power to change people. God saves them, but we can change them. We can change them by investing in them. We can change them by trying to, to make disciples out of them. That's what Peter did. You, you track back and you look at Peter's life, moments after Jesus had ascended into heaven, um, Acts chapter 2 tells us a story about Peter where he is, he's gathered the, the largest crowd that we can see in Scripture that he preached to. We don't know how many people were there, but he's, preaching, he's getting ready to preach to this large crowd. And, and some really th crazy things are happening. Jesus is gone. The disciples are there on their own. And the Holy Spirit comes down. And when the Holy Spirit comes down upon the people, things get rowdy. Like the, the Bible tells us that there were people from all walks of life there, from every nation were there, from every different tongue were there. And what was crazy about it is that as they were speaking, the people were looking around going, I can, I can understand this. It's, it, was, it was as if they spoke in, in, in one language. The early, um, the Jews in that time, many of them looked at those people and thought, wow, they're crazy. Like, they have to have been drinking. They have to have been. And Peter makes clear, it's only nine in the morning. He's like, no, they haven't been drinking. They're not drunk. They're not intoxicated. Now, what you see is, is, is something like, it's from God himself. And Peter preaches this message to them. And I want you to listen 
I want you to listen to the the words that he says, okay, to this crowd of people, largest crowd that Peter has ever spoken to. In Acts chapter 2, starting with verse 22, the Bible says, men of Israel, this is Peter, he's talking to them, men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know, like you know it, you know what he did. In verse 23, he says, this Jesus delivered up according to the, the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. You crucified them. Verse 24, Peter says, God raised him up, loosening the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. Like he's preaching about Jesus. You're the ones. You crucified Jesus, but God didn't keep him down. No, it, it wasn't even possible for him to stay down. God raised him up. It, look at what verse 32 says, a little bit further down. This is, this is Peter. This Jesus that God raised up, he raised him up, and of that, we are all witnesses. Like Peter is saying that there are people among us here. We witnessed the resurrection of Jesus. We saw him die, but we, we know that he lives too. We've seen the resurrected body. Now, when they heard this, They were cut to the heart. Like it penetrated their heart. And and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Like Peter preaches his first sermon ever we see in scripture. And the people were cut to the heart to hear about Jesus. Jesus. And do you know on that day that 3,000 people repented of their sins and placed their faith and trust in Jesus? Peter was living his calling. He was called to make disciples. In fact, Jesus told him and tells us today, you, you look all the way back in Matthew, the early, the early verses of Matthew, Matthew chapter 4, he says, follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. That's what we're called to do. We're called to fish for people. We're called to invest in people. Not, not, just, like, not just for right now, but we're investing in people for eternity. We're, we're called to fish. How many of you fish? I know some of you, you don't, you, know, you don't even, there's no way you can fish. Like you've tried it before. You lose more lures than you catch fish. I get that. Uh, some of you, you know, when you go fishing, you catch more, you pull more sticks and leaves out of the, the, the pond than you do a fish. We're called to be fishermen, but not that kind of fishermen. We're called to fish for people. What are you doing to make disciples? What are you doing? Do you know if we were living this out, truly living this out, if we were making disciples, do you know that there wouldn't be an empty seat in this room? Not an empty seat, but there's some empty seats. Well, what are you doing to make disciples? That's what we're called to do. We're called to make disciples, to invest in people. When was the last time that you invited someone to come to church? I'll take a step further. When was the last time you brought someone to church? As I said earlier, it's God that saves them, but we have the power to change them. By our invitation, one simple invitation, you could change somebody. You could change their life by inviting them to church. What happens when they walk in the door and and through all the worship and, and everything that happens, God just reaches down and touches their heart and they recognize they need Jesus. And at that moment, they say yes to him. Imagine, You were a part of that. That's what we're called to do. Make disciples. How do you know if you're a disciple? If you're making other disciples. 
Doesn't mean that you're an expert. Doesn't mean that you have all the answers. It just means that you're investing in other people for eternity. So that's number one. Number two is this, if you're making mistakes. How do you know if you're a disciple? And well, it could be if you're making mistakes. Like you look at the disciples, they got things wrong. They, they were not perfect by no means. And, and that's following Jesus doesn't mean that. Following Jesus doesn't mean as disciples that we're not sinners. No, we, we, we get things wrong. We're just trying to figure things out. You look at Peter and Peter was like all of us. He was sticking his foot in his mouth all the time. He's always making mistakes. I'm going to show you just a few. Okay, one time in John chapter uh, 18, where the, they're coming to get Jesus. Okay, they're, they're going to come get him. They're going to take him off so that they can crucify him ultimately. Peter thinks he's doing a big thing. Peter thinks he's protecting Jesus, right? He, it, it would be something that any one of us would have done. And listen to what happens. Uh, Peter, um, when they're coming in verse 10, Peter having uh, drawn a sword, okay? He drew it, he struck a high priest's servant and he cut off his right ear. He cut off a guy's ear, right? I mean, isn't that crazy? So crazy. Verse 11 said, so Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into your sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the father has given me? And essentially what Jesus is saying is, why are you trying to, trying to stop me from my calling? Why are you trying to stop me from doing what I came here to do? Like put that away. I, I can't imagine how he felt. I, I thought I was helping you, Jesus. I'm, I'm sorry. Dude, I'm sorry. You know, I mean, dude's ears laying on the ground. I, he made a mistake. We often see Peter make mistakes. Jesus would tell him earlier in, in Matthew, Matthew would record this conversation where Jesus is telling the disciples, this is what we're going to do. I'm, I'm going to the cross. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die and he's telling the whole story. And Peter's thinking, no, not you. I'm not going to let this happen. Not you. And, and the, the story um, kind of goes like this uh, in chapter 16, verse 22. And Peter took him aside. He took Jesus aside. And he began to rebuke him. Saying, far be it for you, Lord. This shall never happen to you. I'm not going to let this happen to you. But look what happened. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Like Jesus calls Peter the devil. How bad do you have to be for Jesus to call you the devil? That's a mistake. That's a mistake. Disciples make mistakes. That's, we're, we're not called to be perfect. We're, 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 there are no perfect people at all. For, for a lot of us here, we need to give ourselves some space and some room, some margin to make mistakes. I know even this week, I, I was just wrestling with mistakes that even I've made and, and, and just over stupid stuff. One day I was going home and I, I got mad at my my phone, like I got Verizon. I've probably said enough, right? I could just go on to the next point. But I mean, I'm, I'm at the point, I wanna throw it out the window and I'm angry. Like if you pass me during this moment, you probably thought, oh, pastor, what in the world, you know? And I'm having a moment and, and, and it's like the Holy Spirit began to speak to me and I come to my senses, but after that I was embarrassed. I didn't talk to God about it for a while. You ever had those moments? When you did something, you said something, and you were so grieved by it, you were so embarrassed by it that you didn't even talk to God about it? And I felt like he was saying to me, um, hey, Lance, give yourself some room. You're not perfect. Some of you, 
you got to give yourself some room to make some mistakes. Like if something went wrong in your life lately, congratulations. Welcome to the club. We're, we're not perfect. We're all sinners. We all need his grace. So you might be a Christian and you might be a disciple if you're making mistakes. It's not enough to just sit there and do nothing. Some of you need to, need to stop that. You've done nothing long enough. Now it's time for you to do something. Even if you make a mistake, even if you get it wrong, do something. How do you know if you're a disciple? If you're making other disciples. If, you, if you're making mistakes. And then number three is this. If you're making Jesus' plans a priority instead of your own plans. Like it's hard to follow Jesus when you're following your plan. Have you ever gone on vacation with someone and you're like, okay, hey, we're going to follow each other. You know, we're going we're gonna to hit 485 and then, then you know, I-77 and we're going to, you know, we're, you're traveling somewhere and you're like, okay, dude, you lead, I'm following you. And wherever you stop, I'll stop. Wherever you want to eat, I'll eat. You ever done that? And, and, and what if you decided... I'm going to take a different route. You know, I'm going to take a scenic tour. I'm going to get off the highway for a little bit, do some, drive some country back roads. Is that following? It's not. It's not following at all. But that's, that's a great picture for what we try to do with Jesus. How many times do we say, okay, Jesus, I'm going to let you lead. You got it. I'm following you. And then we go the other way. A disciple is one who prioritizes Jesus' plan over their own. You look at uh, Peter's life. He had a plan. He, he was living what he thought was his purpose. He had moved on as a young boy. He, would, he had moved on. He had picked up his, his father's trait, which was to be a fisherman. And, and we pick up this, this, this story in Scripture in Luke chapter 5 where, where uh, Peter had been fishing and him and along with some other disciples, they had been fishing. They had been doing the thing that they knew how to do. They had fished all night long. That was what they did. They fished all night long in, in, the, in the shallow water, but they caught nothing. Jesus comes along with this huge crowd that's following him, gets up in Peter's boat and says, hey, push out just a little bit so I can talk to the crowd. Now imagine this. Imagine all the people. Imagine that many people for him. He had to move out into the water so he could talk to him. And after Jesus got through, you know, talking to the people, giving his sermon, he looked at Peter and he sends him out. He says, let's go out. Let's go out into the deep water. I love the story because Peter said to Jesus, uh, well, I've already been out there. I fished all night long. And Jesus said to him, well, uh, we're going to do it again. But this time, you're going to throw the nets on the other side of the boat. And listen to what happened in verse 6. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. See what happens when you go Jesus' way? Verse 8 says, And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a, a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catching of fish. They'd never caught any fish like this. They had taken him, and so... Also were James and John, son of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. For now on, you will be catching men. Like right then, Jesus gave him his assignment. You're, you're going to be a fisherman, but you're fishing for men. 
And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed Jesus. They left it all. See, a disciple puts Jesus in front of himself. That's what disciples do. Jesus said it himself in Scripture. He said in Matthew 16, verse 24, he said, If anyone comes after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. That's what a disciple does. We prioritize Jesus' plan over our own. See, it takes commitment to follow Jesus. It, 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 it's not something that's easy. Like if you're looking for, for an easy life, if you're looking for easy believism and e just an easy life, the, probably following Jesus is not for you because it's not easy. Jesus, to follow Jesus, it takes commitment. You, you think about Jesus, what was he committed to? He was committed to the cross. And Jesus says to you and to I and to the, any disciple, you got to take up your cross and carry your cross. So that means we've got a cross to carry. And if Jesus can carry the cross, then we can carry the cross. It's like a, a faith that costs you nothing is, is worth nothing. Your faith has got to cost you. Is it costing you? That's what a disciple is. A disciple follows Jesus. A disciple puts his priorities in front of theirs. You remember Jesus, uh, Peter's first sermon? It was something I left out of the story. He preaches his first sermon. 3,000 people are saved. They asked him, what shall we do? Let me, let me go back to that story. I want, I want to read to you what Peter said. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38, And Peter said to them two things, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Do you know that this message is still the same today? that this message hasn't changed at all. Repent and be baptized. That it's a command of Jesus. In fact, if, if we were to take everything that I've said today and just kind of pull it together into one thought, how do you, how do you know if you are a disciple? You might say it like this. Being a disciple of Jesus means to obey Jesus. Just obey him. Being a disciple of Jesus is, is about saying, yes, Lord. Like whatever you want me to start, I'll start. Whatever you want me to stop, I'll stop. That's being a disciple. And, and the reason why we do that is because of what Jesus said in Scripture. Jesus, in, in early in Matthew, like right before he would ascend and, and go into heaven, he tells the disciples, he talks about his authority. This is something that he's doing. He's like, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. God gave Jesus all authority. Think about that. Jesus has all authority in heaven and on earth. And then he makes this command, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always. We forget that sometimes. We forget as disciples, that is the command that Jesus gave us. Go make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all this. And, and a cool thing about it, if you've said yes to Jesus, and if I've said yes to Jesus, he says it right here, I will be with you. Jesus is with us, and he's called us. And he's saying to you, and he's saying to me, make disciples. But he doesn't stop there. He says to you, and he says to me, be baptized. Be baptized. It's the first public example of a changed life. It's why that right there is so cool. This morning, when you 
watch as people were baptized. You saw their past, their present, and their future represented. When someone stands in baptism, I'm telling you why it's so important. When someone stands there in the waters, they're standing there and they're showing the world what their past looks like. Like that's the old self. That's the old them. That's the old you. That's their past. When we baptize them, when we take them down into the water and we lift them up again, that's their present. They're, they're showing that there's a new me. The Bible says that when we receive Christ, the, the old is put away and a new has come. That is, that is a new life. That's why I say, uh, buried with Christ in baptism, raised to a new life. That's the present. If you have said yes to Jesus and you've been baptized, you're a disciple of Jesus, you have a new life. But what's cool about that is it goes beyond just our past and our present all the way to our future. Because one of these days, one of these days, this body that we have, it's gonna stop working. One of these days you're gonna hear, oh, Pastor Lance, he died. He died, I, I don't know when, I hope it's a long time from now, but he died. And when you hear that, I just wanna tell you, don't believe a word they say, because I'm not dead. I'm not dead because of what that represents. The moment you come up out of the water, you are raised with Christ. You have a new life in Him. And one of these days to be absent from the body, for me, is going to be present with the Lord. That's baptism. Baptism. It's our first opportunity to obey Jesus publicly. And here's what I know about baptism. There are some of you here and you've never been baptized. You've said yes to Jesus. You've raised your hand in the service. You've prayed the prayer. With your mouth, you confessed Jesus is Lord. With your heart, you believe that God raised him from the dead. You're saved. But there's never been a time in your life when you've obeyed. See, in the Bible, Jesus tells us the very first thing that we do, the moment we give our life to him, we go to the waters of baptism because it's a testimony to everyone who sees it of a changed life. So let me ask you, have you been baptized? Have you obeyed Jesus in the very first thing that Jesus asked you to do? Don't delay. Church, don't delay. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Jesus is calling all of us to be disciples of him. And one important step that I don't want you to leave out is that one right there. So today I'm gonna to give you an opportunity. Be baptized. I don't leave here. Some of you right now, you're starting to break out in the hives. You're starting to sweat a little bit. No, hang with me. Say yes to Jesus. Don't just say yes with your heart and don't just say yes with your mouth. Say yes with your actions. Say yes in obedience. Be baptized. You saw it, like, like Gabriella, first one. She's scared of the water. She can't swim. None of them could swim. You don't have to be afraid of the water. But I'm going to tell you something, something in that water right there. It's crazy. You want to be a disciple? Be obedient. Be obedient. Being a disciple. Isn't it, it isn't something that we just fall into, but being a disciple is someone that we become. And the good news for all of us here is that God wants to make disciples out of all of us. Will you bow your heads? Please close your eyes. 
Don't look around. Don't look at your neighbor in front of you. Don't look at anyone beside you. Just for a moment, take some time with God and, and answer this question for me, will you? Are you a disciple? Are you? Are you a disciple? Or, or are there things in your life that's pre preventing you from fully following Jesus? From fully saying yes to Him? If there are right now, why don't you just begin to talk to God about those things? Like get them off of your heart. Get them out of your life. Surrender them to Him. Give them to Him. Are you a disciple? Maybe there's some of you here and I asked that question and it's a clear no. You know you're not a disciple. And you're not a disciple because you're not even a Christian. You have never said yes to Jesus. You don't have a personal relationship with Jesus. Let me tell you something. That means that you've got another step. Like today for you, you need to know that, that God wants to make a disciple out of you, but the first thing you have to do is say yes to Jesus. That's the first thing. So I wanna invite you right now, say yes to Him. The Bible tells us that if we with our mouths would confess that Jesus is Lord, and if we would believe in our hearts that God raised Him from the dead, we would be saved. I just gave you the way to salvation right there. Confess Jesus with your mouth. Believe in your heart. So I wanna just give you a moment Right now, as your, your eyes are closed, your, but your heart is open, if God is speaking to you right now, like you know, I don't have a relationship with Jesus, but I want to say yes to Jesus. Right now, say yes to Him. The way you say yes is just right now, begin to pray this prayer with me. Go ahead, pray this prayer. Say, Jesus, will you please forgive me of my sins? Jesus, I know I need you. So today, I am turning from my life of sin to a life surrendered to you. Jesus, come into my heart. I'm all yours. Jesus, I'm all yours. Listen, if that was your prayer, Jesus Christ just saved you. He just stepped out of heaven and right into your heart. If that was you, wherever you are, do me a favor. You gotta do something so important. Will you tell me? Right now, will you tell me? By just simply lifting up your hand, would you say that, hey, Pastor, I just prayed that prayer. I just, I just said yes to Jesus. Is that you? Wherever you are right now, I'm just gonna ask you, would you just lift up your hand right now? Just lift it up. Lift up. I'm not going to come to you. I just want to know from right here. Just, just lift up your hand. Lift it up and hold it up. Just lift it and hold it up. 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 Hold it up high. Yeah, hold it up. Pastor, I said yes to Jesus. I said yes to Him. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Would you stand? Everyone just stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. This is what we're going to do today. We're going to close with a song. I'm going to ask our, our, our prayer team and our, our counselors, if you will, just to come down here to the front. And I'm going to tell you what we're here for. We're here to pray with you. We're, we're here to connect up with you. You can come and you can take these people by the hand. They love Jesus. They are disciples of Jesus. And they would love to pray with you. They would love to talk to you in any way they can. Some of you you need to come take them by the hand and say, I need to be baptized. All right? I need to be baptized. And this is what we want to do. We'll, we want to baptize you today. We've got shorts. We've got t-shirts. We're ready for you. We've got towels. They're clean. They smell good. All right? You come and you take these people by the hand as we sing, as we sing about the truth of Jesus. There's so much truth in this room. Come on, you come, you come. As disciples, if there's anything that's holding you back, you just come down here and pray. Just give it all. Don't leave here carrying that weight with you. No, no, leave it right here. Today, let's do business with Jesus. Come on, come on, let's do it. Let's do business with Jesus.
What could take away the sting of death? Only a love I hadn't met. And what could cause this restless heart to rest? Only the promise that you kept for so long. I was searching for truth when all along I was searching for you. Then you opened my eyes, you opened my eyes to see you, Lord. Oh, I was blind to love before you opened. Now all I see is you, all I need is you, and what could cause the broken things to heal? Only a power that is real, and what could cause the prideful heart to kneel? Only a grace that none can steal For so long I was searching for truth When all along I was searching for you Then you opened my eyes You opened my eyes to see Oh, oh, oh.
Thank you for joining us for service today. What an incredible service we got to witness. Baptisms, incredible worship, and a great message from Pastor Lance, all about being a disciple. And I like the question Pastor Lance asked, are you really a disciple? And there's more to that than just believing in Jesus. And I like how he said a disciple is fully devoted to learning from Jesus to live like Jesus. What a great message. And if you said yes to Jesus today and you made that decision, we want to celebrate you. Let us know. We want to pray for you. We want to connect. So you can scan the QR code. Let us know. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and we'll see you next Sunday.